What's up guys, it's Sam. Today I'm going to walk you through some basic tips for Metal Gear Survive. And I, I kind of wanted to, to give a disclaimer that there's going to be some minor spoilers, but I really tried to make these around non-campaign so it didn't have anything to do with the story. Um, that way you guys would, hopefully it would be better for your experience. So these are designed for newer players, typically somewhere between 1 to 20 hours in the game. And some of the things I wish I knew, which would have made it a lot easier as I transitioned um, into the mid to late game. Uh, following this, you'll see me do another video for tips for co-op on how to get S and, and hard uh, co-op salvage missions. So you'll see that coming up as well. But for now, let's kind of talk about some of the tips when you first get into the game. So my base is going to look slightly different, so I'm not going to show you a lot of it because I, I really don't want to give away spoilers and things. So um, what we're going to do first is the first thing I'm going to say is whenever you start the game, if you don't start by selecting start in the co-op lobby um, you want to go to your Virgil and move into co-op missions and what this does is this um, will prevent your food from degrading over time currently in the game and this may be changed but even while you're in your base your food degrades pretty much at the same rate that it does when you're walking around um, out in the dust out wherever so first thing I'll tell you is when you go into the lobby here you'll notice my food won't degrade while we're here and while I'm talking you through the rest of the tips. So that can save you over time. A little bit of a headache is that's probably the major problem in the early part of the game. Now one thing I will tell you is once you kind of get that under control as your base grows, once you get that under control the game is much more enjoyable. So if you feel frustrated because you can't find food and water, watch the rest of this video. I do give you some more tips on that and hopefully you'll really enjoy the game because once you get through half of the campaign it really starts to become much more enjoyable so uh, next one I'll move on to is so the items in the game will respawn over time so obviously we're not on a map where I can point you out to some things but your transporters that you begin to unlock those are very important so you want to unlock those typically first before even doing the campaign missions if they come up and the reason for it is the transporters have a lot of loot there that respawns sometimes a couple times a day. I don't exactly know the timer, but it seems to be about, it can be as much as two to three times a day, depending on how much you've looted it recently. So that's really important when it comes to managing your food and some of your materials, because some of those materials around the transporters, like um, example, later on you'll need a lot of firing units, and I won't say for what, so I don't spoil it. Early on you might need some gerbils and some hedgehogs, so those tend to spawn around those areas. So keep that in mind as you're looking for food. Those are a great resource for food. And um, it's a great place to, you know, you start in the game for the day and you just hop around all your teleports, grab all the materials, grab some gerbils, um, probably hedgehogs, depending on how far you are in the game. And when you cook those, they'll also reduce the amount of hunger progression on, on the hedgehog, I believe it is. So that'll also help a little bit with your hunger. Um, next one is carry weight. So I see I've been watching a lot of streams, I see a lot of new players that will, I guess we'll go over here to kind of the loadout. Your carry weight will reduce a lot of your stamina, and same thing, it seems to increase the amount of food and water that you drink. I don't have hard numbers for it, but it really does seem to matter. So if you look, I have a different loadout, which you can set in, in your um, safe. Um, I have a different loadout. Where I don't even wear pants. The only reason I'm wearing the shirt and the hoodie is because I consume less food with them. It has a perk on it that allows me to do that. So I don't even wear pants. Um, the weapon that I'm using is actually a gray weapon, so I don't damage my better gear. But by having a different loadout, specifically for running around and looting, can help you reduce the amount of, again, food and water and make it a little bit easier on yourself. So make another loadout. That definitely helps just for when you're going to uh, go out and do your loot runs. So a problem early on in the game, and I'll go ahead and take you guys back to the base for a few minutes. Um, one of the problems early on in the game is, is you don't have a great source of clean water. Um, I will show you where you can get some later on in the video, but um, without having a great source of clean water, you tend to get uh, the sickness, I believe it's called intestinal sickness. Um, you get the bubble guts basically 
where your guy's vomiting and he gets sick and it's really annoying as you're early in the game because there's a lot of dirty water but there isn't a lot of clean water. So one of the things you can do is you can sleep for six hours by going to a shelter or a tent. For at least a certain amount of time. As she's talking about right now on cue. You'll see it'll say fully recover from abnormalities. So even though you're going to lose lose hunger and thirst, it can be worth it just from the frustrating standpoint of not having to run around and puke while you're trying to fight zombies. So keep that in mind as an option. Um, also, it saves you from using some of your medical... Um, resources that you might be running low on early in the game. Later in the game you'll have plenty and you won't need to worry about it. Um, you just won't want to inconvenience yourself from food until you get to that stable point of um, being able to grow and harvest a bunch of your food. So another thing is you see people run around all the time and they're sprinting to everything. By sprinting you're gonna reduce your effectiveness of your food and water. So the more you sprint, the more you eat, the more you drink. So try and um, jog at this pace here, and it doesn't deteriorate the amount of food you have anymore versus trying to run where it does deteriorate your food and water pretty significantly, actually. Um, so another thing you see a lot of people do is they need to craft, and they come over to their crafting menu, and when they go to a crafting menu, they sit here and they go, okay, all right, I don't have any of this, I don't have any of this. Oh shit, I left this in my bank. I gotta go back over here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my bank. Okay, now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna go over to this menu because I needed to make something here. Don't do that. By crafting in the lobby menu, you don't reduce your food, you don't reduce um, your water. So it can save you a ton of time. Um, I shouldn't say a ton, well, a ton of time in harvesting additional food and water resources. So. That's one thing you want to keep in mind. Again, stay in the co-op lobby where you can. It's it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but for the most part, you really don't need anything in the main base. So next thing is we, we go and we look at your base. So without giving too many spoilers, this will have a minor spoiler in it, but eventually, you see I don't have any junk around here. Eventually, you'll get the opportunity to remove some of the junk that's around here and a lot of people really don't know how to do that. Basically, you go to move, repair, and deconstruct, and you're going to hold. Um, I, I use a controller, the Xbox controller. You're going to hold the Y button on the scrap metal. You'll be able to remove that, and they give you resources for it. So as soon as that happens, you want to make sure to do that. Um, around this, probably slightly before that, you will come across an item. And I don't have on, any on me, so I'm going to show you where they are. And it can be very beneficial from a navigation standpoint. So you will come across a beacon. And this beacon actually appears on the map. Uh, you can see there it says it's a visual indicator. That can help a lot when you need to come back to something. You find a container or at least a blue light you know you can't get to. You don't have the oxygen or you don't have the um, food or water you might need in order to come across to go back to that and then go back to your, your wormhole. So these are something you can take that really allow it to be much easier to navigate on your map screen. So that's another little one that I think might, might help some of the newer players. So if you're really early on, you aren't gonna know this, but if, if you're not, um, that you can probably skip this tip, but basically anytime you can, you that you need coupon energy, you want to backstab any wanders, any zombies, any, any, even animals. You want to knock them out uh, for more resources and teleport them back with your A button if you're running a controller. Um, that's one thing you want to make sure to do. That way, you get more resources. So as a zombie, you'll get 1.5 times the amount of Kuban energy that you would if you just kill it and then harvest it. Also, it's faster to do that. One of the first things you should gain in talking about harvesting zombies and harvesting resources is the fast hand skill. So I'll show you guys where that is because it's a huge quality of life improvement. I still think it needs to be buffed personally, but um, I'll take you over here and show you where that is. If you get this as one of the first skills you can get, it does tend to make your, like I said, the quality of life much, much, much easier. So fast hands is, or I'm sorry, quick hands is right here, which allows you to collect resources from enemies, containers, other objects, all that stuff easier. Um, 
So again, without giving you spoilers on the subclasses, I'll keep it to that. Um, anytime you're going to clear a Wanderer area before a wormhole or, you know, doing a mine, anytime you do that, it makes your life so much easier. So keep that in mind as you're going around and, and you're clearing your wormholes if you're early on in the campaign. Make sure to clear the zombies out of there because you can do it at your pace rather than at their pace. It saves you from having to make a lot more fences than you would. It saves you from having to make, um, you know, a lot more things than you typically would have to. Uh, from resources, either, whether they be mines, molotovs, more ammunition, more arrows, whatever it might be. You can typically backstab quite a few of them. Use your crystals, like you see these here. Use those to lure them into a pile, then molotov them, or backstab them. Uh, depending on what's easier for you, however you want to play it, but clear them out before you start the mines. It makes it so much easier that you can dictate the pace rather than them all coming in at a group and you having to, to scramble. Um, one of the next ones is something I wish I would have thought of probably two or three hours into the game, but um, repairing your air tank is really critical to the amount of Kuban energy you go through, as you, especially early on as you're struggling to navigate. So if you look... Um, it's not going to let me to use oxygen, but right now I believe I would be using 320 energy and that just doubles, it seems to at least double all the way down until your oxygen, your air tank rather hits 0% in which you can continue to use it, but it's a huge amount of Kuban energy. It might be 9,000. So you may have to kill 10, 15, 20 zombies, depending on the, how, what the level are in order to make up for your energy bill just to keep your tank, um, just to keep your oxygen level up so you can make it back. So by repairing your air tank, it resets the amount of energy that you're going to go through. So make sure you keep that repaired, especially when you're going on runs. It saves you a lot of energy long term and can definitely help with your <laughs> sanity as you, you're trying to kill more zombies in order to make up just to pay for your oxygen bill. That can be super frustrating. So. Here is, is one of the best tips I can give for an, er, an entry-level player, somebody just starting. You can see my sheep aren't here and the water's not here. There's a minor spoiler here, so I'll kind of go slow, but um, essentially if you don't want the spoiler, hit pause for a few seconds, skip about ahead about 10 to 15 seconds, but um, this will dry up at a certain point and the sheep will go away. While you have the sheep, it's a great idea to mine them. On top of that, over here, you still have your gerbils though. Um, over here, there is a source of clean water, and this respawns. I don't want. I don't know if it's once a day, once every 12 hours. It's not very frequent, but you really want to use this as much as possible. Um, you're more concerned about uh, the wild berries that are over here, the gerbils, knocking out the sheep and teleporting them back to the base. And then obviously if you need dirty water, I never really harvested that too much because I had dirty water, I just didn't have clean water. So use this resource um, as much as you can before it dries up. And the best way to do it is to, in order to farm the sheep, and currently this has not been patched, I don't know if it will or not. To farm the sheep, you wanna run over here, sprint, punch, and then you're gonna hit your A button on a controller to full on them or fold them back to the base. And you'll get tend to get a little bit better resources that way. Save your game, go to the title screen, load your game back up, and repeat. That'll give you a an ongoing source of food that should really help if you're early in the game when you're really, really struggling to find food. So as much as you save and repeat, it seems to work. It has not been patched. I don't think it's an exploit. It does seem like it's intended. And I'll, I'll kind of go into the last tip as... That we'll transition to that. So this game early on does not seem to be meant to be played for six to eight to ten hours at a time without doing co-op, without having some sort of a break to the game. And the reason I say that is things will respawn over time. Eventually you're going to get, like let's say you begin to get some resources in your base. Those resources and the amount that they're um, utilized on your your... Uh, so let's say potatoes, for example. Potatoes don't come up for three, maybe four, maybe five hours, whatever it might be. So it's harder for you to continue to utilize resources at long periods of time versus 
logging off, only playing two to four hours initially, then two to four hours, and maybe another two hours here or there, and not spamming it. What that does is it allows your respawns to kick in because it happens over real life time. So early on, the game's definitely, it doesn't seem to play nice when you're trying to binge it for six, eight, ten hours. So if you feel that you're struggling, give it a break, go back, check your respawns, and that should definitely help with the amount of um, uh, stress and frustration with trying to find some of the things throughout the world. So hopefully that helps you guys. That's it. I wanted to keep it about 15 minutes, so there you go. And hopefully it helps you. I do think the longer you play the game, the more you're going to like it. I just hit about 100 hours, which I tell you guys is my rule for making videos. I want to have about 100 hours in before I go and um, give you some tips. So thanks for watching. If you have anything you think will help lower level players, put them down in the comments. And uh, you'll see the co-op video coming out for me in uh, probably by tomorrow. So thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.